I will talk on the cross-contamination control strategy. I am Rahul working in Zydus. So this is the vision statement uh, and I will not go long back and but it is a uh, 2005 because this topic is uh, very decades old. This is the vision statement of FDA and also other regulators also have similar type of vision where it is clearly mentioned that maximally efficient, agile, flexible manufacturing sector that reliably produces high quality drug product without extensive regulatory oversight. So important words here are efficiency, agility, flexibility, reliability and extensive regulatory oversight. So what does it mean? So failure to change will be termed it as we are going old, aging or obsolete. Then maximally efficient, agile and flexible means that facility of yesterday will not fare well going forward. Flexibility is also key important factor characterized by a ready capability to adapt to two new different or changing and requirements. And most importantly, reliability is about the whether we are able to produce the drug product which has which are free of adulteration or not. And next slide, please. So, what are the consequences of uh, due to the cross contamination? It is actually uh, if you say consequences, but other way of looking at it is how we can increase the efficiency or reliability into the our operation. And what are the consequences? First is impact on quality and safety implications vary in product efficiency, efficacy and potency is jeopardized. Then financial losses are occurring, like a lot of cost of product recalls and disposal is happening. Expenses for facility shutdowns, investigation, kappa, loss of sales and market share. Regulatory consequences, we have spoken in details in last session and we got good insight from that. Operational disruptions are happening due to the cross-contamination issues, uh, production delays, downtime, disruption of supply chain, shortages, potential impacts on meeting market demands. And most importantly, investigation and remedi remediation cost is resources required for identifying the source of contamination, training, retraining to prevent the future occurrences. Next, please. This is the Ms. USFDA and MHR inspection trade which I could find and for the other agencies also similar trend exists but this was easy to find uh, easily available so that's why I showed here. So these are these are the 43 observations or MHR deficiencies received. So still the volume is consistent more or less increasing or decreasing throughout the years that is what uh, I wanted to highlight here. Next please. Then generally when USFDA or any inspection concludes, then generally the fluidity observation start, your firm failed to follow the procedure, so on and so forth. And I was given some examples like what white spots are observed, then a systemic assessment of equipment cleaning program not done, the residue of white surfaces, stopper bar not cleaned, scratches, dents are observed. Then exhausters are not clean, shoots were wiped with lint free clothes, stains were observed, still stains were observed. And these are the numerous observations from different regulatory agencies we are getting, like uh, dirty equipment whole time not established, cleaning limits are not followed, antical method not established properly. So this list still exists whenever we are facing the inspection or when, whenever we are conducting our self-inspection program. Next please. So these are the references available, reverse schedule M, USFDA guideline on penicillin, non beta electrum, uh, 21 CFR part 11, then UNX1, uh, then uh, just a second, I have to use it. Yeah, so then EMA, UNX1, EMA shared facility guidelines, EMA question and answer on health based limits. So WHO guidelines are available, PDA TR29, it is a pretty old uh, talk, uh, guideline on cleaning validation. Then PDA TR90 on containment, which is recently published. And ISP has also published potent molecule guidance, which is very depth in depth, cleaning validation guidelines uh, already published and risk MAPP guidance which is published maybe more than 10 years back. So there are a lot of references available uh, on this topic. Next please. So what is the when 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 the dedicated facility is needed to us? 
when the scientific data from the toxical evolution does not support a controllable risk like highly potent allergens such as penicillin cephalosporin then dedicated facilities needed the risk can't be controlled adequately controlled by operational or technical measure for example cytotoxic and certain hormones the radio pharmaceuticals ectoparasiticide substances for the treatment of lice and relevant residual limits derived from the toxicological evaluation can't be satisfactorily determined by the validated analytical method. These are the circumstances under which we need to have the dedicated facility. So last point regarding the relevant residual limit has to be met. I have tried to extrapolate here. So it is a complex calculation I have tried to mention here. One is for OSD and one is for injectable product. So how to calculate it? So if we have macro, if you have total surface area, then we have to calculate the surface area per 100 centimeter square generally from where swab is taken and in how much solvent it is deep like 25 ml and then we calculate the LOQ level required. So if your LOQ level is more than 3, 3 ppm which is, uh, which is calculated theoretically then we can't manufacture the product into that equipment. And if it is less than three, then we can manufacture. Similarly, I have explained into the further risk where only calculations are different uh, from the uh, surface area where total risk volume is considered. So similar calculation is there. And in those cases, if our LOQ is more than uh, the limit, then we can do, or if it is less than the limit, then definitely we can manufacture the drug product. Next, please. So this is a very uh, critical slide and a very busy slide, but it is uh, it is based on the ISP risk MAPP. It will completely give the gu guideline that is the first of all, in uh, if the regulations do not exist for the any, uh, uh, if the regulatory uh, regulations say that uh, for certain molecules like cephalosporin or penicillin, we have to uh, have the dedicated facility. Then straight away we need to have. Let's see the at the bottom. We need to have the dedicated facility. But if it says that it is not uh, means dedicated facility is not required, then we have to say mix up retention, airborne, and mechanical transport risk. So if retention risk can be managed, these are the first two blocks, then we can manufacture the drug product into the shared facility. And this, this is explained at the third, uh, third arrow as well, that in under what circumstances we need to have the uh, shared facility, we can do it. Next, next slide, please. So this is the risk management uh, uh, flowchart from the IS, uh, ISSQ9. So I will not go much into the detail, but most important is that uh, risk assessment is a live document. It is not a something which is prepared on uh, only one time basis and then kept aside. It has to be updated on a regular basis as in we, uh, when we get the knowledge about any risk. What are the risk uh, elements of risk assessment? Those are the material and infrastructure flow design, maintenance, filtration system, equipment, all those should be considered in qualification, supplier qualification, personnel, equipment process, those shall be considered. Then in personnel, personnel flow, governing, handling, then training, etc. shall be considered. And when it comes to the study, in simulation, media field, smoke study, governing qualification, material handling, simulation shall be considered. And as I want to emphasize here that risk assessment is more than a female, which we'll discuss into the next slide. And human factor plays very important role into the uh, cross-contamination control strategy. Next slide, please. So these are the uh, means, uh, deliverable or quality policy standard required for the uh, risk uh, managing the risk of cross contamination. Most importantly, as I explained into the previous slide, this is very vast topic. Uh, we need to have the complete holistic view. So, toxicologists, industrial hygienists, engineers, quality manager, then users or biological persons, uh, personnel, uh, and subject matter experts shall be part of this uh, uh, panel, and they should be uh, they should be form the group who should perform the. Uh, Cross contamination strategy CCS. So, what is the documentation needed? Technology transfer document, it should cover ADM monograph, then cleaning process, sensitive of the analytical method, 
risk management I already explained pre-registration master plan shall be available it should talk of bracketing approach which will be followed new product introduction strategy new paid introduction strategy then to manage whatever risk are identified change control shall be there the product quality review whenever new uh, risk is identified it should be reviewed during the pqr and then our document should be our quality system management system shall be updated Kappa is needed to track whatever identified, we need to implement it. And most importantly, the competency of the staff to implement, execute, and see the sustenance of the system. Next, please. So what are the roots of cross-contamination? So as per ICH and when we come across the CCS, there are four roots of administration mix up. So just uh, keep uh, miss eye on this figure. So mix up risk is there, the retention risk, Mechanical transfer risk and airborne transfer risk. So mix of retention uh, risk consists of mix up of API, inedit, identification or labeling system. Then uh, retention is cleaning addition. Then uh, equipment cleaning, disposable techno technology, single use technology, all shall be considered into that. Then mechanical transfer is a RABS or isolated. We want to use closed system, prime, how much is the in-depth primary containment we have done. And airborne transfer is dedicated containment facilities and HVC design and all those stuff. Next. So what is the, means that these are the some deliverables or these are the key findings regarding the containment. Limitation of the spreading of the substances or an agent is a containment. So when it comes to the CCS, whether uh, the question should be, is should not be that whether containment is necessary. Containment is always necessary for the general molecule or potent molecule or cyto or any form of molecule. But important question which we need to add, uh, address in CCS is how much containment is necessary. Then the needed level of containment depends on the degree of biological activity or how much hazard that molecule has. Zero risk is never achievable. So we always plan or our calculation shall be in such a way that how we will manage the residual risk or how much residual risk is uh, tolerable to us from the safety perspective. From the primary containment level, so primary containment is at the equipment level containment, which, which is like the uh, isolators I, I explained or RAF system or IPC sampler, de-dusting unit or closed systems. And secondary cont containments are our air locks, which anything is escaped from the primary containment, then how secondary containment will arrest that, uh, which whatever the molecule has escaped, like clean room, air lock, and so on and so forth, or corridor production rooms. Next, please. So there are the two terms which are used in the, by regulators as well as by the industry. EDPD, these are the synonymous uh, terms. Acceptable, acceptable daily exposure or permittable daily exposure and OEL. AD and PD is more related to the equipment cleaning or retention risk and OEL is related with, uh, uh, to the operators actually. So AD and PD I have explained you in the previous slide. OEL is regarding the 8 hour uh, average, 8 hour time weight average, how much exposure can be uh, done by the personnel who are operating into that room. And generally, if oil is more than 100 microgram per meter cube, then in eight hours, it is acceptable that it should, the exposure should not be more than that, except irritants or any short-term exposure limits uh, uh, can cause the hazard to that operator. Modern sh facilities shall be planned according to that. And some facilities or uh, some organizations are taking care and it is encouraged that we should plan a facility in such a way that we take care of design exposure limit or containment reference targets are there. Like we take the naproxen molecule or lactose molecule and define the containment level uh, less than or less than 50% of what your worst case molecule will really have. Different guidelines mentions see these are the hazard spe spectrum, so, but it is organizational call to decide, but it is most important to follow and execute it properly. Next, please. So this is the containment strategy. So risk assess the material information in this uh, risk assess identification, toxicity, physical form of the molecule, doses form, then external factors, GMP regulations, the space ergometric shall be considered. This process information, how much 
how, where, when that containment has to be done, that has to be seen. Then OEL, STL, macro, micro, microbial limit uh, shall be considered into the risk analysis. And then if controlling options are ele either eliminate or substitute the uh, that hazard and process flex uh, and if you are not able to do that, how process flexibility is built and engine controller are established in the risk mitigation strategy. Process constraint, physical constraint, and human factors impact. So uh, this is a very important human factor. Always plays a very important role into the CCS. Next, please. So uh, let us go to the human factor analysis. And we have been talking a lot about artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, blockchain technology then uh, big data analytics so let us go to the world of humans where humans are very important so let us see what other industries are doing here so uh, if we, we see the example or big big uh, catastrophic disasters of other industries like aviation or chemical chemical industry then one thing is common is that when that mishap or disaster happened the next day's newspaper headline was more targeting towards that it is a human error but when a deep rooted investigation was done, then it was found that this, uh, whatever is mentioned was not correct actually. The human error which was mentioned was only a symptom. It was expression. But the human factors were playing. There were a lot of causes which were playing behind that tragedies. So let us go one by one. And this is what I could populate from other industry. Root cause of the vast majority of deviation is uh, human error related or human factor related is quality system weakness. Third highest cause of death in the United States is medical error after uh, cancer and then uh, uh, I think heart diseases. Third is the medic medication error is causing the deaths in the United States. So I got this statistic very easily. So that's why I put and, uh, and that's why US, US and then some countries name is coming again. But it is here my point is to give the only the view that what is happening around. So this is the medical error, uh, medication error. The global cost associated with the medication error is 42 billion USD annually worldwide. The worst period for human error is always at 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. So if we see and if you analyze the disaster, they happen in the early morning. So 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Human error account for 90% of road accidents. The rate of human error and mistake is more when we do the procedure based task, manual task, one upon 100. So every 100 tasks, one error will be done by the human. Average worker is interrupted every 11 minutes in the industry and then he spends third of the time recurring from that disruption. And it is happening in pharma as well. Only we don't have the statistic published. Most of the pieces of manufacturing utilities are designed for right-handers. We have not taken consideration of the MBDX person or left-handers. Best operators are prone for making the biggest mistake. So human error can be done by anybody. We have seen that one upon 100, uh, that factor. 17 hours of work without a break is operation, uh, operationally the same as being legally drunk. So if we do the lot of uh, overtime and then if we go beyond 17 hours, so now our uh, means uh, capacity or level of doing the task with efficiency will be always lower. And later, latent errors are underestimated. I will uh, talk on latent error, latent human errors in uh, one of the slides with the examples. Next, please. So how to design the checklist? Because in cleaning, we have seen that lot of observations for regulators. And we are also lacking behind in our lean thing, lean app uh, management. We are not able to achieve our lean management goals because of the cleaning failures and these observations or internal observation. So first is, I have made this first example more complicated for the understanding of all and facilitated better discussion. See, spelling mistake and writing, uh, write numeric one instead of word one. So see the on the left side. So suppose we do the spelling mistake and we have cleaning checklist having multiple uh, uh, spelling mistake. Like who is mentioned like this. So now what happens is actually our brain has to correct that spelling. So our brain will correct that spelling to the two. And then our brain is capable of reading the numeric values actually. So it will convert word to the numeric value and then it will process that information. 
So now, if you have done that errors, multiple errors, so every time brain has to do that processing and the error will, so it is uh, something which is prone for the mistake. So when it uh, multiple error incur, like spelling mistake or this uh, word uh, word document, like word is mentioned, one is mentioned as a word, then there are the chances that error will be more. Then serif font is for the readability purpose and sans serif for legibility purpose. Hence, always header shall be sans serif and photograph paragraph shall be serif font that facilitate the reading of by the our operators. 80% of the uh, means 83 percent of information of the surrounding is acquired by the site actually. This is the proven science. So whatever is there, means whatever clean, cleaning checklist, we should use the maximum pictures. We should use the attention actuators because picture is a worth a thousand words. Poor instruction shall not be there into the cleaning checklist like verify all parameters. Mix for at least one hour, at least verify take approximate, so approximate, these are the words that makes uh, certain things subject to. So standardization is not facilitated by those. Then in cleaning validation, CPP shall be not more than, because we want to work on the worst, uh, worst case. But in actual routine, when we develop the cleaning checklist, we should mention that not less than, suppose we want to do the uh, WFR purified water or potable water flushing of the equipment. So in cleaning validation, it should be not more than five, but in routine, it shouldn't be always more than five. So it should not be less than five. This is what we should see. Whenever we design the checklist, cleaning checklist, so try to give the pictures on to the left because a left hand side field is analyzed by right hemispheres of our brain and vice versa. And right side of the brain is responsible the, for the perception of visual information. So visual information is possible on the right side. So picture will be analyzed better if it is on the left side, while the left hand side is primarily responsible for speech and abstract thinking. So whatever words we want to mention, we should be mentioned onto the right side. This is how we should define the, our cleaning checklist. The right action in an order, they need to be carried out, like add detergent ABC, mix for 10 minutes. It is the natural order of addition. Right. Instead of adding, after adding detergent ABC, start mixing for 10 minutes, where brain has to process these things again and again. And then we make the human factors play and then human error happens. Next, please. So we are talking about a lot of, we are doing a lot of digit, uh, digitalization and automation. So what one thing we should keep in mind is there is nothing like only a automation. There is always an intelligent automation. So how we can do, I have to, uh, try to capture here. Suppose we have the operator. This is the first example, operational excellence and compliance. We have operator. He is a qualified. Then only our work allocation software should allow him to be allocated this work. Otherwise, it should give us the error that he is not qualified. These are the control we should place into the software. Similarly, if CPP is there, if it is not within the limit, software should give the alarm that why you want to run this cleaning operation outside the CPP. Interlocks, like campaign length is exceeded or dirty equipment uh, whole time or clean equipment whole time exceeded, the system should give us an alarm that this is the thing which has happened. So go back to the quality management software, take the uh, division or whatever, uh, QMS, and then work systematically and then after approval it should allow. Then when we go to the paper, like cleaning checklist, you should have a paper a photographs which are showing difficult to clean areas or difficult to inspect areas. Okay. So next, go to the next. Yeah. This is a switches model for the human error reduction. So this is a like a, this is the slice of the cheese. It is a defensive layer. And each hole into the layer represent the opportunity for the process to fail. And see, this is the arrow. If that arrows miss these holes match, then losses will happen and will not get prevented. And if this mismatches, that losses will get prevented. So our system, like I have given for CCS, one example is non-viable particle monitoring into the sterile clean room. So if NVPC is not within limit, so alarm shall be into the room. 
we should give the red alarm. Then automatically machine should stop. Alarm display should be into the BMS room. And if you have a manufacturing execution system or EBMR, so it should go into the system and it should throw there, there as well the alarm into the EBMR. So if you have multiple controls, then probability of escaping the failure gate reduces. Suppose we have the uh, cleaning validation software. So, and we do the macro calculations, which I have shown you previously, which are complex calculation and probability of human error is more. So, software shall also do the macro calculation. Manual, uh, manual person shall also do the calculation. Those should match. Only we should proceed with the, our cleaning limits. So, this is the care we should take. So, this is how we should implement our controls into by the manual as well as automation system when we are in hybrid or hybrid system or if you are automated, all automated sh controls shall work together. Next. So human competency. So education, experience, training, skill, behavior, and attitude. Education, experience, training. Uh, we are very uh, mature into that. But now the focus should be more on the skill. And most importantly, when we have skill, our behavior, what is our behavior, whether we follow the right behavior, when somebody is not seeing whether we follow the cgmp appropriately and our attitude which defines the culture shall also uh, shall also be followed and these three things skills behavior and attitudes are very important for the success of the contamination control strategy so what is uh, the term for that so for all these six skills the competence is the word it is much more than training it implies appropriate education experience training skill behavior attitude and physical and mental capabilities. In revised UNX 12022 as well, the behavior word is mentioned like experience, training and behavior. So we should always exhibit the right behavior which is uh, which we have earned after the uh, skill assessment. Similarly, ISO is also using the term competency and it is avoiding the uh, uh, word training. Next please. I will take the some case studies how the selection and handling of SAP samples. So in analytical method validation, it is a very simple flow, but uh, we'll see how it is a prone for creating the multiple mistake. So like we take the diluent, uh, dip the swap, then whole time is whole time we establish. Then again, next level pre-extraction whole time and post-extraction whole time. So it seems to be a simple process, but it is vulnerable. See. We have, the, we have to dip the swab, but sometimes some person fails to give the swab by dipping. He just gives the bundle of the swab to the person. Whole time, he do not see the whole time. He do not extract properly. Instead of waiting the swab and giving along with the diluent, we get, give, give the dry swab. And diluent, it should be used, which is established in the identical method addition. But we uh, we have tendency or by mistake we give the the W5 uh, W4 purified water uh, diluent into the W4 purified water. So these are uh, sonication after sonication. We have to immediately inject, but we forget to follow. So although it is a simple process, but see how much human error can happen into this. So this has to be taken into consideration when we design the appropriate contamination control strategy, and it should be the part of the risk assessment. Next slide, please. Rahul, sorry to interrupt, but you have uh, last five minutes. Uh, yeah. 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 So these are the case studies. Unknown impurity observed in three different drug products. Case study one, where when uh, we got the unknown impurity, preservative was the excipient. And when we do the multiple hypothesis, we found that the preservative was the contaminant. The CIP parameters are modified and we uh, could uh, do the validation again. But now see the second example, uh, again we get the uh, impurity uh, and when we do the hypothesis we find that this is the uh, impurity from the same drug product actually. It is a known product because cleaning verification sample were sent before finished product an analysis obviously. When uh, That's why we didn't come to know but when we analyze the finished product we see that this impurity is coming from the finished product. Uh, it's, it is an uh, inherent impurity of the finished product. And third is the impurity from the previous product, which is very, very difficult to skin, uh, difficult to uh, sticky nature and difficult to clean. So this is the, these are the three cases, different cases, but the uh, their problem statement are same, unknown impurity observed in three different drug product sample. 
So here I want to highlight is uh, sometime when we are into the decision making, operator always do not make human errors. Even decision makers who are not part of the process also are prone to make mis uh, mistake. Sometime rule based mistake like sometime first inst instances happen one month and we think that that might be the next time also the uh, kappa but it do not happen and that is what the it is the biggest source of latent errors into the system like suppose the digital automation is done we i, I highlighted multiple example but when we, that digital checklist is implemented and uh, myriad of operators are operating that uh, system then catastrophic damage can more happen so that's why we, we should be careful uh, for the latent error when we develop the digital tools or when we are into the decision making uh, uh, position next please this is another example that in a inadequate or orbital building, so media fill failed and then after the replacement, we could do the three media fill. Then BET test, one of the excipient was the naturally occurring excipient and it got built and we were uh, suppose uh, if we do not have a BET remote like any OS treatment, citric acid treatment and then BET failure happen and that can be the root cause that we should do the uh, periodic uh, treatment of the uh, vessel after the cleaning by 10% uh, in, in OS or citric acid or nitric acid. Next please. So these are the other example I have explained. So I will not go into the much, but MACO is the perennial problem. Then uh, suppose one uh, one equipment is used for the two product, but still sometime MACO is calculated twice. So, but as the vessel is coming into the contact, contact with the, both the products, so MACO should be different. Next, please. So most importantly, we are into the AI ML field, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So as we go ahead into the artificial uh, intelligence, emotional intelligence will play the important role because everything uh, we think that after 10 years, machine will be doing. We are mechanizing humans and humanizing machines. So what important parameters, so what important drivers will be with the human being is self-awareness. This should be agile, teamwork, influence, critical thinking. This should be into that uh, when we enter into the AI ML uh, era. So both should go hand in hand actually. That is the what culture means. That will drive or that will be the fundamental of the, our culture. Trusting teams in for informal and unintimidating environment is most important uh, in the building the culture. Word supervisor in, uh, is from the Latin and it means your physical presence onto the shop floor. So we should have our uh, supervisor working on shop floor, doing Gemba because most of the mistake happen in night as well. So uh, doing Gemba as well into night, uh, making themselves present into the night. This is the hallmark of the good culture. And uh, remember, we can place everything. We can have the best of the system, software, equipment, facility. But if we don't have culture, then success can't success because the culture is strategy into breakfast. Next, please. This is the last slide actually and uh, CCS is not like uh, making everything bigger and complex. What requires real effort and courage is to move in opposite direction and to make things as simple as possible. We can make the th uh, things simple and still implement the CCS. That is what uh, I want to convey. Thank you very much. The question that uh, has been asked and which I'm sure that many companies face. Uh, the question is that uh, this company is about 20 years old and the equipment appear to be slightly stained. I mean, they are colored, you know, on the SS uh, equipment, uh, even though the MOC may be of the right uh, choice, but sometimes it shows some stains or color. But when they do the swab testing or in swamp, uh, sampling, uh, they all meet the requirement and uh, there's no spe uh, specific issue with that cleaning procedure. Uh, so how do you overcome such observations when there is an inspection? where they find some red stains um, on the equipment, uh, but uh, electro polishing or buffing uh, may not be possible for each and equipment of this kind, uh, but they still want to continue using this equipment. So what would be the uh, answer to this? Yeah, so suppose any equipment is there and it has some visible sign. So even if we test it, it will meet the acceptance criteria because our method is not universal. But if it is giving the first visible sign that pitting or something is happening, so we should not use that equipment. 
And uh, if you see any regulatory guideline and uh, cleaning by addition criteria, what is the criteria? First is it should be visually clean because regulators also are aware and we are also aware that methods can't detect everything. So it is failing the first criteria. So we should have the criteria, so what we will accept and what we will not accept. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, uh, you can look at the questions uh, uh, later on. But I think most of them uh, you did answer in your presentation. Uh, thanks to you, Rahul.